So if you have ever experienced dry, red, or irritated eyes, then you may be one of the millions of people who suffer from dry eye syndrome. This condition occurs either when you don't produce enough tears on the surface of the eye, or your tear film evaporates too quickly. And the reality is it's often a combination of both of those things. Now, dry eye can be caused by many different factors, but the number one best natural treatment for dry eyes that has been confirmed by research to not only improve the amount of tears produced on the eye, but also prevent tear film evaporation and improve dry eye symptoms is that of omega-3 fatty acids. So in today's video, we're going to break down everything you need to know about omega-3s and dry eye. First sharing what the published research says about omega-3s and dry eye, then followed by how to get more omega-3s naturally in your diet, and even some tips on omega-3 supplements, including how much to take and what types to take. And this video is not sponsored in any way. I am not here to sell you omega-3 supplements. You will not find affiliate links to any omega-3s in the video description below or anything like that. This is really just information I've been researching and I think will bring a lot of relief for a lot of people with dry eyes. So first off, what are omega-3 fatty acids? Omega-3s are polyunsaturated fats that are considered essential for our human health and well-being. They're termed essential fatty acids because our bodies do not make them on their own. We need to get them from an outside source, such as through our diet. There are three major forms of omega-3s that are abbreviated as ALA, EPA, and DHA. In fact, if you ever look on the backside of like an omega-3 supplement bottle, you'll usually see at least two of these forms listed. Usually you see EPA and DHA listed. Now the ALA form of omega-3 is found in plant-based sources such as ground flaxseed and walnuts, for example, where the EPA and DHA forms are found most notably in fatty fish, such as salmon, mackerel, and maybe a little bit in tuna, and even in fish oil supplements. However, I do want to point out that there are many types of oils in fish oil supplements, and it doesn't necessarily mean that there is much omega-3 content in fish oil. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. In addition to the dry eye syndrome benefits of omega-3s, omega-3s also have been extensively studied in helping not only general inflammation within the body, but also for heart health, joint health, and retinal health in the back of the eye, and even brain health in reducing risk for Alzheimer's. You can definitely go fall down a rabbit hole into the research like I did, but the general consensus is that uh, omega-3s are really good for the whole body. So now, how do omega-3s help with dry eye syndrome? Well, on the very technical side of things, and I just want to nerd out for a second for the doctors who may be watching, but omega-3s play an anti-inflammatory role through competitive inhibition of arachidonic acid as substrates for the enzyme cyclooxygenase and 5 lipooxygenase. But in very layman's terms, it means omega-3s help shut down inflammation. And this reduction in inflammation has been found to not only increase tear film production, but also improve the clarity of the meibomian gland secretions in the eyelids, both of which been led to improved signs and symptoms of dry eye. You see, the majority of your tears are formed in your lacrimal glands, which lie just above and to the side of both eyeballs. And omega-3s have been shown in research to reduce inflammation within those lacrimal glands, allowing them to produce and form more tears on their own. And it's even been shown to reduce inflammatory biomarkers within the tears themselves. And then we have the meibomian glands. The meibomian glands are specialized oil glands within the eyelid that produce a very thin layer of oil that mixes with your tear film and prevents them from evaporating. Well, these meibomian glands can become inflamed and then the oils become very thick and cloudy. And then the glands can even stop producing oils altogether. And then your tear film evaporates very quickly. And even if you produce a good amount of tears, if you blink and your tear film just evaporates instantaneously, you're still gonna have terrible dry eyes. But in the research, omega-3s have been shown to improve the fluidity and the clarity of these meibomian gland secretions, therefore helping it produce more oils, better oils, and prevent that tear film evaporation. And at this time, there's even some evidence in animal models that omega-3s can help with the regeneration of corneal nerves on the eye, which play a vital role in the healing of damaged surface cells on the eye from things like dry eye. So I think from a very broad broad spectrum view of what we know about dry eye, the different causes and different treatments, I think omega-3s can play a huge role in just kind of leveling the playing field for a lot of people. So how do you get more omega-3s into your diet? And 
how much is recommended? Some of the foods that are known to contain higher amounts of omega-3s are that of oily fish, such as salmon, mackerel, and herring, for example. And the American Heart Association and the Arthritis Foundation both recommend eating at least two servings of oily fish a week. Now, you can get omega-3s from vegetable sources as well, such as eating walnuts or ground flaxseed, for example. However, there is some evidence in the research that does support that ALA, the uh, again, the plant-based omega-3 sources, doesn't convert very well in your system to EPA and DHA very efficiently. And so you may not really get much usable form from just solely relying on vegetable sources of ALA. And with all this, you're ideally not just getting more omega-3s in your diet, but you also want to be reducing omega-6s in your diet, which are found to be very pro-inflammatory and are found in a lot of highly processed foods. So you wanna be getting more omega-3s and also reducing the amount of processed foods in your diet. Now, if you're not a fish eater, you don't like the taste of fish or you're concerned about the overfishing of the oceans, which is a topic of concern, or you are worried about mercury or other contaminants in the fish, then a lot of people do turn toward omega-3 supplements as an option. Okay, I did want to pause right here because in the process of editing, I didn't realize I forgot to mention a few things, uh, namely because in this video we talk a lot about fish oil supplements or omega-3 supplements, and you don't necessarily have to get omega-3s from fish. You do have the option of trying out what's called an algae-based omega-3. In fact, that's where fish get their omega-3s to begin with is because it, they eat algae and then it passes down the food chain to the fish. So if you're somebody who, again, is concerned about overfishing of the oceans or you don't want to take fish oil supplements, you can choose to get your omega-3s from an algae-based source. I just encourage you, if you go that route, make sure that you do read the milligrams and the concentration because that can vary between brands. So otherwise, let's get back into it. But if you do want to go that route of taking a supplement, uh, the next tips I'm going to be sharing are going to be very brand neutral tips. I don't want to talk about specific brands in this video. I'll save that for another video if people are interested. But specifically, I just want to share information that you can take with you to look at any brands at the store or online so that you feel really um, kind of well armed in understanding how to read labels and really what the science is suggesting is going to be best for dry eye. So first, from looking at the research, the majority of the studies do support that at least around 1,000 milligrams a day of omega-3 is beneficial for dry eye, with a little bit more compelling research suggesting that around 2,000 milligrams a day may be a little bit more beneficial or maybe at least result in faster resolution of symptoms. But I personally wouldn't go over 3,000 milligrams per day because that's kind of the safety upper limit. And again, this is omega-3 content, not fish oil content. So when you look on the back label of like an omega-3 supplement bottle, uh, make sure that you're reading that it's the omega-3 content or milligrams of omega-3 and not just milligrams of fish oil. Speaking of looking at the labels, you'll probably see both EPA and DHA listed separately. It is largely agreed that both EPA and DHA are good for the eyes with EPA maybe being a little bit better for dry eye and with DHA being a little bit more supportive for retinal health. But again, both EPA and DHA, a mix of the two, are good for dry eye. The other key thing to know about omega-3 supplements is that they come in two different forms. There's a triglyceride form of omega-3, and then there's an ethyl ester form of omega-3, and your body absorbs these differently. The triglyceride of omega-3, uh, that one is more similar to that of the what you get from an oily fish, just eating fish naturally, where the ethyl ester form of omega-3 has to be processed by adding ethanol to it. So if you can, try to find an omega-3 supplement that offers a triglyceride form. The main benefits of the triglyceride form is that your body basically absorbs it a lot easier than what's in the ethyl ester form, and there's research to support it. So you get kind of a better bang or oomph out of taking that type of omega-3. And then the triglyceride form is not as associated with kind of upset stomach issues, kind of like fishy burps or digestion upset stomachs. But either way, I do encourage people to take omega-3 supplements with food because that'll also help with 
with any digestion and absorption issues. Now, another really important thing to understand about omega-3s is that they are not a silver bullet, and they will take time to work. In most of the compelling research that shows benefits of these omega-3s with dry eye, they take about two to three months of taking them consistently to show some level of improvement. And this will largely depend on how much omega-3s are naturally in your system before taking anything, and then also how much omega-6 is in your diet as well. And stay tuned because soon I'll be releasing a video which will showcase my own experience testing out omega-3 supplements as I was able to do a blood test first to see where my omega-3 content is. Then I started taking the supplements and I tracked my dry eye symptoms over time and then took another blood test at the end to compare really where my blood levels of omega-3 were along with my dry eye symptoms and how they were changing. And then finally, while I do personally believe that omega-3s are the best natural dry eye treatment that we have right now, I know a lot of people do have pretty extreme forms of dry eye and will still require medication or in-office procedures. You'll really benefit from that. So I do encourage you definitely see a local eye care professional, an optometrist or dry eye specialist to make sure you're getting appropriate diagnosis to make sure it is dry eye and not something else and that you're getting the best treatment possible. And whether omega-3 supplements are not only what's right for you, but even safe for you. But hey, if you found value in this video, please hit the like button for us, as well as share it with friends and family who you think it may help. Otherwise, if you want to learn more other natural dry eye treatments, things that you can do at home, check out our other videos covered up over here. Otherwise, again, this is Dr. Allen here from Dr. Eye Health. Keep an eye on it, and we'll see you in that next one.